Today is Wednesday, October 4th, and this is the show that is the coldest above all others. And I'm Doc Martinez, and welcome to the Ice Bath Baby podcast. Today joining me, I have some guests in studio. Is this a studio? It's my office, actually. But in studio, I have some guests joining me. Why don't you introduce yourselves real quick? Hi, I'm Amber Sanchez. I'm, I'm Riley Jackson. I'm Lainey Bowman. I'm Daniel Freeman. All right, Daniel, Lainey, I'm going to need you to use your podcast voice on this. Sound levels need to come up, okay? All right, so on this week's show, uh, I'm going to recap football's game versus Robstown, volleyball's two games against Fredericksburg and Davenport, and I will recap cross-country's meet in Poth. So stay with me for this and more on Ice Bath Baby. Hey Bulldog fans, this is Dylan Peace. It's fall sports season, so that means there's plenty of action for you to come out and see and cheer on your Bandera Bulldogs. Football, volleyball, and cross country wants your support. Purchase your football and volleyball tickets online ahead of time or on game days at the ticket booth. Go to the Bandera Athletics website for schedules, tickets, and more information and find an event to come out and cheer. Let's make it a great sports year for the blue and white. Let's go Bulldogs. All right, guys, thanks for uh, staying with us. All right, so let's go to this week's uh, uh, recap on sports. So football had their sixth and final non-district game of the season on September 29th versus Robstown at a neutral site in Jordanton. Now, this is our third time in, I think, four years playing in Jordanton. Uh, twice, well, we played last year against Robstown. Do you remember that one, uh, Danny? Yeah. And uh, – and we, were you there for that playoff game we had against Sinton, too? No, I was not there. I was still in Florida. All right. So we did have a playoff game there against Sinton a, f- a few years ago. Um, I'm not sure what it is about that field at Jordanton, but it's different, right? Like yeah, there's, I agree. Yeah, there's a different vibe. Um, so uh, I know that, Amber, uh, we were – when we were filming the mic'd up, you you even said something about that, didn't you? Like just being there, it's like kind of off. Yeah, it, it it was definitely different. Anyway, so the the Bulldogs got back on the winning track with a hard fought forty two to thirty five win. Uh, this game was back and forth all night long, just as it was last year. Last year we won by a touchdown as well, twenty eight twenty one. Um, and like I said, it's just, it's so different there because things, uh, don't always work out the way we want them to in Jordanton. We had some injuries last year, uh, had a few this year, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be all right. What do you think, Danny? Yeah. Um, for Robstown, a lot of guys had to step up and, uh, they did. We got a uh, Jesse with the uh, six touchdowns. That was huge. Yeah. Um, like. If our offense is scoring 42 points, that shouldn't have been uh, as close as it was. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I mean, w- when when you have to score 42 to win, like, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, like I said, it was like that last year. Like, we had a decent defense last year. Our defense is pretty decent this year, I think. But for some reason, that game, I don't know if it's just because we match up well with them or because maybe we struggle with them because they're smaller. You know, you, I mean, even though they were smaller, I felt like all around, like, it's just kind of – it's. It's that old thing, you know, you play down to your competition, right? Yeah. And so, anyway, so we went down 21-14 at the half. Um, but uh, just like last week, we came out energized in the third and, and scored three touchdowns in the third quarter. Uh, and so we wound up going up 35-28, heading into the fourth. Uh, and then Robstown made it real interesting late uh, late in the game when they tied it up at 35. Um, but defense kind of – you know, hammer down. Yeah, Danny, what do you think? Yeah, in the fourth quarter, um, defense, like, we just kind of got them figured out, and we adapted and uh, shut them out. Yeah, in the fourth quarter. yeah, we, we were able to hold off their 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 last struggle or last fight, right, to try and score a touchdown, and they, we had them on a fourth and, I don't know, three or something like that, I think, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but I know we held them 
and uh, they turned the ball over on downs and and we went into victory formation so yeah all right so i don't have players of the game for this week uh actually because uh, that hasn't been released uh yet um but when those uh, come out, I'll, I'll send those out to y'all next week's at next week's podcast. So, Danny, what's our record now? Five and one. Five and ro- five and one. That's right. And next up, the Bulldogs are gonna have. We have our off week this week, uh, where we'll get some well deserved rest, and uh, and then we're getting ready for Pearsall to open up District 14 4A play on the road in Pearsall on October 13th. So come on out and cheer us on. Okay, um, moving on to volleyball. Uh, on the volleyball side of things, uh, the girls uh, played two matches last week. On uh, Tuesday, September 26th, they traveled to Fredericksburg and lost 3-0. Uh, game scores were 16-25, 28-30, and 21-25. So I feel like those last two games were a little bit closer. What do you think, Riley? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, she's looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but uh, they were a little bit closer for sure. Uh, and I know that um, Coach Mo told me that the Davenport coach uh, said some good things about our volleyball team and, and talking about how, uh, you know, they um, uh, uh, came out and just, you know, didn't give up, you know, and, and, and always fought. And, and so that was that was really good. Um, so – let me correct myself. I, I, I gave you the Davenport scores, and that was on Friday the 29th. Uh, that was the um, – no, I, I, I'm, I'm totally off, guys. Um, I'm going to have to edit this part. <laughs> All right, let's start over. On the volleyball side of things, uh, the girls played two matches last week. Uh, on Tuesday, 9, uh, September 26th, they traveled to Fred- Fredericksburg and lost 3-0. Uh, those game scores were 16-25, 28-30, and, and 21-25. Uh, those last two games were uh, a little bit closer, and it looked like we were trying to fight uh, fight our way for a victory, especially in that second game, but didn't work out quite the way we expected to. Then on Friday, September 29th, they traveled to Davenport. Uh, the outcome of that game was 3-1 in favor of the Wolves. Uh, game scores were 13-25, 25-21, 6-25 and 20-25. Now, the, the Bulldogs did take one of those games, and, and I know that the Davenport coach afterwards uh, told Coach Molina that the girls uh, really had uh, some good fight in them, uh, and, and in uh, Coach Kiefner's words, had that Bulldog bite uh, and didn't give up, and she praised them for that because she said some other teams had come in there and just you know kind of took their three losses and, and were happy with it, but we were not. And, uh, and and fought for that uh, that victory. So their overall record moves to 21 and 16, uh, and they are one and five in District 27-4A. This week they're having off. Uh, they have off uh, Tuesday, and then they have a home game against Bernie on Friday. Uh, we need all you fans to come out and fill the stands for that game because number one, it's Bernie, right, Laney, and number two. Uh, there is no football game, so you have nothing else better to do. So come cheer on the girls and as they start the second half of district play. Laney, uh, are y'all uh, – Laney's a cheerleader uh, as well as a cross-country runner. Are, are, are cheer, is cheer going to come out to that game, do you know? Um, I haven't heard anything, but probably not. Okay. Um, all right, well – Come cheer anyway, right? Come out because, like I said, there's no football game uh, to uh, uh, go to. So you can come out to the gym and and cheer on the Bulldog volleyball team. (coughs) All right, so cross country. Let's move to cross country. They traveled to Poth last week, which was a change on the original schedule. And they were supposed to go to Seguin uh, for the, the Matador Classic, but late, I don't know what happened, but late uh, in the week they changed it to Poth. Um, the girls had a, a, a really good performance uh, and finished uh, second behind state-ranked Poth. Lainey, uh, I heard that that course was kind of rough, huh? Yeah, the first, like, um, I would say 200 was all an incline and um it felt very slow in the beginning 
and then the first like mile was around a whole field so that went by pretty slow yeah yeah so uh was it hot um not at the time that i ran but varsity ran at nine and it got a little hotter yeah all right so well the girls had a good performance they finished second like i said uh behind uh poth who's state ranked uh individual times our top three varsity girl finishes were carly nickham with uh, 1259, Emily Presses, listen to these two right here, Emily Presses and Tatum Muller. Uh, Emily Presses had 1318.647, and Tatum Muller was right behind her with 1318.673. So it was literally like somebody's hair one, right? Like their hair. Like that, like that's a thousandth of a second, right? And that's crazy that they were so close together. Um, all right, so the boys uh, completed, uh, or they competed out there as well, and uh, they finished six as a team. Individual times were as follows: uh, Ruben Reese seventeen forty nine, Mariano Casas seventeen fifty, and Albert Robinson seventeen fifty three. So cross country will have off this weekend as they prepare for the district meet that's going to be held on October twelfth. That's next Thursday at City Park in Bandera. That's right. You heard me correctly. City Park in Bandera. That means that you have another chance to come out and cheer on the Bandera Runners right here in Bandera, Texas, America. Uh, races are going to start early that day, so check out the Athletics website for more information. Now, uh, we have, um, I think it's, it's going to be Varsity and JV or, uh, divisions out there. Are they running middle school out there, L uh, Lainey? Do you know? No, middle school's district is at Uvalde this year. Oh, that's right. That's right. I think you're right. And it's this weekend, I think, isn't it? Or this week sometime? I don't remember mm, for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. So, all right. So, come out, see Laney, uh, and, and see the rest of the uh, varsity girls uh, come out, uh, compete, and the varsity boys. Uh, we're looking for some big things. Um, do you know how the varsity's picked to finish in the district, Laney? Um... A tough it'll district. be it'll be pretty close. Yeah, yeah. we've been um, going like head to head with like our biggest competition. I'd say right now is probably Bernie. Yeah, because that's been back and forth throughout all of like my high school years. Yeah, um, I think Fred will probably um, end up doing pretty good. Yeah, um, I don't know about Navar. I don't. Who even is in our district? <laughs> yeah, Navarro. Like, I think Navarro's in there Navarro, too. Yeah, Davenport. So, what do you think about that? Were you were you uh, you were in district last year in Fred, right? Yes. What do you think about that course compared to City Park? That course was a lot more like out in the open. Yeah. Like there wasn't shade at all. It was flat. Yeah, it was pretty flat. And um, compared to ours, ours has a little bit more. It's like a little more secluded. Yeah. Goes through trees and it's yeah, and we have a. Not too many hills, but yeah, like just it's not bad. Yeah. It's not a bad course. All right, so sounds good. All right, uh, guys, any, any final thoughts, comments, questions from any of y'all before we close this segment out? No, Amber, you good? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, Riley, yeah, yeah. Laney, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Daniel, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thanks for catching up on the scores and results with me for last week. Uh, it's now it's time for our interview. Uh, so today we're going to hear from Coach Salone, another Bandera grad turn Bandera coach. So stay tuned for that. Hey Bulldog fans, this is Dylan Peace. It's fall sports season, so that means there's plenty of action for you to come out and see and cheer on your Bandera Bulldogs. Football, volleyball, and cross country wants your support. Purchase your football and volleyball tickets online ahead of time or on game days at the ticket booth. Go to the Bandera Athletics website for schedules, tickets, and more information and find an event to come out and cheer. Let's make it a great sports year for the blue and white. Let's go Bulldogs! Okay, guys. Well, thanks for staying with us and joining us uh, again. Uh, so today I have uh, Coach Salone, like I told you I was going to have. Uh, Coach, uh, why don't you tell us, uh, give us a little bit about you, uh, full name, and uh, where'd you graduate college from? 
my name is Jeremiah Salone. I graduated from Iowa Wesleyan University. Um, I graduated in 2019 up there with an elementary education and a re-endorsement, and then I got my master's in athletic administration just this last summer from them. Oh, sweet. Well, congratulations on Thank that. You. That's Appreciate awesome. That. So, Bandera, you're a Bandera grad. Yes, sir. Right? When did you graduate from Bandera? Uh, 2016. So, how did you find your way to Iowa Wesleyan? Yes, sir. Um, that's, well, a, that's a long way up. It's a long way up. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was born in Ohio, so, like, trying going up there, you know, like, I have some family close to that, so I felt going that way could have been better. But, honestly, it was just me and three, two other kids from – the same class one went up there to play football with me another one went up there to play baseball gotcha. and we all just kind of decided to go up together yeah and uh see how see how it was going to be yeah that's crazy uh i mean that yeah, yeah that just seems like a long way away yeah it was <laughs> it was definitely a long way away multiple drives up there without stopping oh going over. It, it, how long of a trip is that it's like a 16 and a half 16 and a half hour drive so it's pretty brutal yeah but done multiple times but wow it's a great place up there man yeah that's cool that's cool all right so uh how long have you been coaching then uh i've been coach this is my second year here i've been there and then i did a year and a half up at um iowa westland during my uh master's ga and stuff we did um the spring COVID season uh-huh and then we did a year and a full season after that all right cool and um so what sports are you currently coaching here at bandera I'm doing football, basketball, and baseball here. All right. All right. So, all right. So, what? Uh, tell me what you think. Um, what was the experience like? Because I know last week I talked to uh, Cody Fields, and uh, what was that like coming back here to coach? You know, knowing that you graduated from here, and I'm sure there's still is, are there still a few teachers here? Maybe that. Yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. a couple of teachers still here. Um, to be honest, man, it, it was a dream come true. Like, I always wanted to come back here and be able to walk back in these halls, be in the same footsteps I was, but in a different role when I was here the first time. So, I mean, it was definitely a dream come true. Didn't think it would happen this early. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I'm very fortunate and blessed to be able to come back home very early and just do what I wanted, what I dreamed of doing. And yeah. Just being here and being with the – couple of classmates I went to school with are on the staff too so just able to get back with those guys and just dream of what we were doing able to do is really amazing now you and Brady went to school together right yes sir he was a year above me so we went together me and Aiden also went together okay so yeah. it was pretty good we grew up we played together a lot yeah when we were like going up through the sports we always who was, your, who was the football coach here back then uh I had three really I had three when I was here, so we had Prince my first year. Yeah. Then we had Sign my sophomore, junior year, and then we had Hamilton my senior year. Oh, gotcha. All so right. There's three of them there. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. So who? Uh, what? What are? What teachers were here when you were? Um. Fry, who was poster then, really was here. Um, I didn't think she'd been here that yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. She was here when I was here. Um, Miss Cardenas was still was here. Yeah. Um, Miss Torres. I think Huber might be. Huber might have been one. Was Bisky the principal then? B- Bisky was um for the first three years he was, and then we got Minchaka senior yeah. year. Yeah, I would say Minchaka is the guy who hired me. Minchaka yeah. and Hamilton hired me, uh, and then Hamilton was only here for like a semester, a semester and not even a full semester because he left in November. Yeah, and so we got I you know even though I had a short time that I worked with him, I really liked that dude. Like we got along really great oh, for yeah, that short mean, time. He's a great guy. Yeah, loves kids like. Oh yeah. Do anything for the kids, man. He's oh a yeah. Great guy. Yeah, I really for liked sure. him when I was here. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, uh, thinking back of your, your high school days here, and then coaching here, what do you think has been your most memorable experience at Bandera High School? Either, like I said, as a student or as a coach. Um. Most memorable will probably be when I was a kid. Me. The same like kids we went went up to Iowa Wesleyan with. Yeah. It was like senior year. We were in the library for um I don't know. I think we were in class and we were doing like note cards for sheer hard paper. Mm-hmm. And um we ordered a pizza and had it delivered to the school. So we went and got it during Richmond and took it eighth period. Yeah. And so like 
that story was probably pretty remembered because we tried to try to play it off like oh <laughs> someone got it for us and yeah. then uh the teacher went and back and checked it and it didn't, it didn't check out so we kind of got <laughs> got in trouble for it a little bit but yeah man, that was pretty pretty funny i was just ordering pizza midday getting it and just taking yeah. it to eighth period class and just eating it taking so, it to class yeah. yeah did they have op- did they have open campus or closed campus back then? uh we did not um you had closed but it wasn't i mean i am it's probably the same here it just didn't really go yeah but yeah we had we had closed campus, but we didn't have early release like like we have now, like juniors and seniors. Yeah. We didn't have that. We had to say all eight period classes, so that's pretty yeah pretty good that they they have that now because that's pretty. I think that's pretty good. Get your yeah. four subjects in, and then you can just go work or something. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the the schools um, that I was at uh, before here, uh, it was a huge campus and. There was multiple doors, kind of like here, you know, multiple doors that led outside the exits. But the thing about out here in Bandera is, is there's really only like, you know, really one way in and out of here. Oh, yeah. And at my, uh, at my other campus, there was like three ways in, three or four ways in and out. And, of course, probably back then there wasn't Uber and DoorDash and all that. No, so, yeah. Um, but in I remember when Uber Eats first started coming on. Uh, that was the only thing you know where people could do like food delivery and there was always Uber always Eats people come and driving up to the back and they would like and and the kids would tell the uber driver go to the back door over here and they'd sneak out i'll go to the restroom right and then they'd go and, and bring like you know all kinds of stuff back in the class to eat or in Man, the lunchroom and you're walking around the lunchroom it's like where the heck did you get that <laughs> from you know uh you know uh, and it's I like how do you hide that right? yeah that's <laughs> That's pretty remarkable how they how they came up with that. That's crazy. Yeah, I I, I I would fear the day that that kind of stuff came out here to Bandera because it would be crazy. Like yeah, they, the, the well, first of all, none of those places would be able to come into the school probably because we have it locked down so well. Mm-hmm. But it's just crazy. Um, all right. So, tell me, um, what are you looking forward to the rest of this year? Man, I'm just looking forward to, you know. We're just getting to district for football, so we're gonna try to go get that man. Look forward to that. Get a couple rounds into the playoff, and then uh, I mean, just on to basketball. Try to um, continue to deepen where we were at in basketball. Yeah. And then probably after basketball, straight into baseball again, and just go try to um, regroup where we were at last year and try to get into playoffs there. So probably just focusing on getting to the playoffs in all three sports. Just go back to back and just be ready to go and just help along as far as as much as I can when I can yeah and, and I know the the culture has changed here a lot since my first year here uh, in 2018 it's changed a lot uh, and I, I know that things are moving in the right direction and I know coach Fields last week was excited kind of coming up about the baseball season like you know obviously he's you know let's finish football first and then go on to baseball and and I'm sure you're in that same mode but at the same time football basketball kind of might overlap a little bit yes you sir. know yeah and and uh, I think it's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to going to that game against Kennedy at the AT and T oh, Center. Yes, sir, Coach. That, yeah, that, that was pretty exciting when we got when we got the news and the kids know like they were all excited. Like they're pretty happy and uh, probably extremely fortunate and yeah. and blessed to be able to just go in there and play on and be in that kind of atmosphere. Yeah. It'd be good for the kids because that. That's a playoff atmosphere, I think. Yeah. Just play on there because it's a big stage. So yeah. once we get to the playoffs again, well, we can just say, hey, we've been here before. We played in the AT&T Center. So we know what a playoff atmosphere f- feels like. So we can't let that get to us. Yeah. And just be ready to go and play our game. Yeah. For those of you listening, if you don't know, um, Bandera boys and girls basketball uh, have been blessed, I guess, if you want to call it that, this year that we are going to play – a couple of games at the AT&T Center uh, the same days that the Spurs are playing out. We'll play in the mornings and they'll play in the evenings. But uh, still, just being in that you know venue uh, is really cool. And uh, I think the boys are playing, I think, on the 18th, I think. And I think the girls are on the 20th. Or it might be the opposite way. It might be the girls on the 18th, boys on the 20th. But check the website for all those updates. Uh, so anyway, all right, last question, Coach, before we end this, because I know we got to start uh, athletics here in just a little bit. But 
Uh, what kind of advice do you want to give someone to maybe look in, into getting into coaching slash teaching? Um, I would say be very, um, be very grateful. Um, get to know the kids, man. You got to be able to uh, be a kid person, people person, and get to know them and build that relationship. Once you get that with any kids, like if you're a te- teacher, it would be the kids in the classroom or your coach, the guys on the field, on the court and stuff. Um, it's just – fun to uh get to see them grow as yeah. you continue to grow yourself with them and just you it's a learning experience just as yourself just like it is for the kids so i mean just be able to get on that and just continue to just talk to them make sure that you know that you're there for them like whatever mm-hmm. you gotta do um just make sure they know that you're there because you're teacher first and then coach second so make sure you always got their back make sure they know they ain't on the they're not alone. You're always going to be there for them and so. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, That that's that's my one word that I've had for many years uh, is relationships yes, uh, because that's what it's about and, and just developing that rapport with the kids and not just with the kids but obviously the other teachers and, and, and admin and stuff like that. But with the kids goes a long way when you can d- develop that trust with them. Right? You no, know? Yeah, most definitely that trust is definitely – um, probably the key ingredients to that relationship because they don't trust you, they're not gonna yeah. open up to you. So I think that's a very a key, very ingredient, like you said. Yeah. All right, Coach. Hey, well, thanks uh, for joining me today on this. I I know we were pressed for time, but thanks for joining me. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and do this. And uh, let's let's uh, go out and and get these wins in football and move on to to basketball. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Doc. I appreciate it, man. Um. Thank you for the opportunity, man. Appreciate yeah, no it. problem. No All right. problem. All right, thanks. All right, so uh, another great podcast today, hearing from some of the other uh, athletes. Uh, Dan, uh, Daniel Freeman, thanks. Laney uh, and my couple of student trainers, Amber and Riley, appreciate y'all being here for the first part of this podcast. Next week, I will be back with more info and stories from the training room, so be sure to join me. Thank you so much for listening to Ice Bath Baby. Be sure to leave us a rating in your podcast app, whichever that one is that you're listening to me on. And be sure to follow us on social media. We are just about everywhere, so look for those links. They can be found in the show notes. Make sure and follow my TikTok too, Ice Bath Baby. That's big. Uh, And be safe out there and when in doubt, put that in an ice bath, baby.